Hey, what's going on, AP peeps? We have a quick video for you on John Brown and Harper's Ferry, one of the immediate causes of the Civil War. So let's get going and talk about this important event. All right, some background info on John Brown. Here he is in about 1846. He was a radical abolitionist for his time. He was an unapologetic abolitionist who felt that violence was necessary to end slavery. We saw in 1856 in Kansas, he took part in the Pottawatomie Creek Massacre, in which he and some of his followers killed five pro-slavery individuals in response to an attack on the free soil city, Lawrence, Kansas. That is a part of something called Bleeding Kansas. And if you want some more info on that, I encourage you to check out my video called A Push Review Bleeding Kansas. And he believed very strongly that he was doing God's work. He believed that it was his divine right to help put an end to slavery. All right, so let's go to Harper's Ferry, and here's a picture of Harper's Ferry from the 1850s. And this, again, as I said in the beginning, is one of the immediate causes of the Civil War. So what exactly is Harper's Ferry? Well, at the time, it was the second largest armory in the United States, so it had lots of weapons and ammunition. And it was located then in Virginia, or today in present-day West Virginia. And it's near Virginia, West Virginia, and Maryland. So John Brown and many of his followers, including a couple of his children, hoped to incite a massive slave rebellion starting at Harper, Harper's Ferry and then going all throughout the South. So on October 17, 1859, he and his followers took control of the armory, and he envisioned slaves and anti-slavery people would take weapons and rebel. And as the news spread of him taking over this armory, more and more slaves would come and get weapons, and they would just continue to fight and try to put an end to slavery. It does not work out well for him. He controls the armory for less than 36 hours, and in the process, many individuals, many of his followers are killed, including two of his own sons. And here's a, a famous painting of the end of the raid on Harpers Ferry. John Brown was hanging out in this engine house here where he was captured by the military, which was led by then military leader Robert E. Lee. So Brown and the rest of his followers, those that were still alive, were captured. A couple did run away, but most of them were captured. And on his trial, he says, I believe that to have interfered as I have done, as I have always freely admitted I have done in behalf of his despised poor was not wrong, but right. Now, if it is deemed necessary that I should forfeit my life for furtherance of the ends of justice and mingle my blood further with the blood of my children, and with the blood of millions in this slave country whose rights are disregarded by wicked, cruel, and unjust enactments, I submit, so let it be done. So he willingly knew that he probably would die in this, and he was willing to give his life for this cause. And a short time later, on December 2nd, so really less than six weeks later, John Brown and some of his other followers were hanged. And here he is leaving the leaving the the jail to go and be hanged. So let's talk about the effects of the raid. Well, well, to some in the North, especially those abolitionists and free soilers, Brown becomes a hero to them, and he is a martyr for them. He becomes a symbol of what the abolitionist movement could and should be about. The South, on the other hand, had a vastly different interpretation of Brown. They were convinced that the attack was just the first of many of these attacks that would happen from the North. They thought that there would be a series of attacks, and this was just the beginning of the future for them. The Republican Party, which is gaining prominence at this time, was associated with Brown in the South's eyes. Now, they had nothing to do with John Brown. They did not support this. They didn't even know about it. For the most part, John Brown acted alone. There were some abolitionists that knew of his plan, but as, as far as the Republican Party was concerned, they did not know about his plan, but they were associated with it in the eyes of the South simply because they did not want to see slavery expand. So the Republican Party is going to try to distance themselves from Brown, but it does not matter in the South's eyes because disunion was near. And we'll see about a year and a half later, the Civil War is going to start. All right. Thank you very much for watching. It's everything you need to know about John Brown and his raid at Harper's Ferry. If you have not already, please take a moment and subscribe to my channel. Help me spread the word. If you found this video helpful, please put it on Twitter, Facebook, or any other social media to help spread the word. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day, guys.